You probably saw the terms service and events, WebSocket and long polling as well. And you may ask yourself when to use what and how to use them in Node.js. Hi, I am Aurin and today I want to explore with you these three terms, take a look how to implement them in Node.js and when to use what. So let's directly dive in. So first things first, uh, what are server send events? So we have the server send event, usually referred to SSE. What we have is the client. So in our case, it's a website um, or in general, any client and the server. The server send events are defined in the DOM events. So the browser basically can subscribe to any event source that is implementing the event source interface. And if you implement the event source interface as a server, the client can connect to it and listen to the events. It is very useful if you have just events that go from the server to the client. The client is requesting uh, request sent to the server so it's requesting the connection and then the server holds the connection open and sends data and these data are in a specific format so data they are sent from the server to the client uh, and as long as the connection is open, it can send data until the client closes it or the server is closing it. The server send events are a bit limited because you can only send UTF-8 data, so strings. Uh, also, you have a limitation of connections to servers to keep them open. Usually browsers have four to 10 uh, connections that can be open. If you have multiple windows open, the connections won't extend so you still have four for the whole browser it doesn't matter how many windows you have open and this will basically remove one of the connections you can use so if you use one for this client it blocks one of the four to ten connections that your chrome has also it's monodirectional so as i said uh, the server can just send data to the client but the client cannot answer on these data uh, this is quite useful if you have uh, something like stock ticker for example if you want to see the bitcoin price live it is very like handy to not pull the data from the server because the server can inform the client that uh, the data changed uh, you can have it for news tickers so you don't have to refresh the page uh, the server will inform the client uh, websocket this is a different protocol it's basically the websocket protocol um, it's a different level. It's a bit. It's on the IC, uh, TCP IP stack, so it's a very thin transport layer, and it offers very low latency. Though, so the client is opening the connection to the server on the WebSocket protocol. So it is uh, WS or secure. It is WSS. So this is not not HTTP or HTTPS. Is uh, it's the WebSocket protocol. This would be like a URL for a WebSocket. And then the server will allow the connection and it send data. But now the client can also send data back. So it's a back and forth of the data. And it's also not limited to UTF-8. You can also send blob or like binary data. And this makes it a bit more like handy for uh, many use cases. For example, you want to have a chat, so it does not require this long polling because this basically is holding open the connection as we see in a second on the headers. Uh, this holds open the HTTP request and polls the data. Yeah, and here you have very low latency and very high throughput on the uh, data of the WebSocket. And also you are not limited to these three to four connections per browser, you can open more connections. But uh, one disadvantage you need to keep in mind is some companies block the WebSockets on their firewall. Some bigger companies won't allow you to use WebSockets. But let's take a look on how we can use this implementation now in uh, Node.js. So here we have the server send event implementation. So what we are doing is just a plain express server. 
we serve the public folder with the HTML in it, and we create a stream endpoint. This is the service and event endpoint. And on request, we say, okay, we want to keep the connection alive. And the content type is event stream. We inform the browser that there will be text in an event stream format, and please keep the connection alive. We have a local counter, we start an interval, and on every counter, incrementation so we say event this is the type of the event and we say it's counter we can name it whatever we want and then we send a new line so this sends it to the stream and the new line say okay next line is coming and then we write data and then afterwards we send all the data we want to send and then as you see we have double new line so this informs the browser okay now the blob is ending and the next one is coming. And when the stream is closed, we clear the interval. Now take a look at the HTMX. We have the server sent event. Uh, we name it counter and we say just connecting to the stream. And on every event, in this case counter, we swap the content of the diff with the response of the server. Let's take a look how it looks like if we reload the page. We see the events coming in here. So the first event, the second event, and it's always type counter. And we see the, the diff content. And this is also what we have in here. It will just uh, change the content here of the counter uh, of the diff with the data from the server. So if we change the content here to a different content, we just say counter and if we reload it changes the value. We can also uh, set, for example, the counter globally to not reset on every request. So as we see now, it's one. Uh, it's not resetting to zero when we refresh. So it, it really depends on uh, the scope. So we have basically this type uh, part is scoped. If we open a new window, uh, we also will not have the same counter, we will have the counter of this scope. Yeah, this is basically server send events. Uh, now let's take a look how we can implement a WebSocket. So we import Express WebSocket. This is an implementation or a middleware for Express to use the WebSocket. And then we add this Express WebSocket to our application. And so this is basically giving the middleware the access to the application. And now we can just do app.websocket and we can implement our chat room. And we have the connection to the WebSocket. So as soon as someone is requesting the WebSocket connection on chat room, we will see it here. We will receive the WebSocket and now we can connect on the WebSocket. So for example, we want to connect on the message event. Every time a message is incoming, we will receive the message and we can just console.log. Uh, oh, we can just console.log the uh, received message and print out how it looks like. And we can also send a message to the WebSocket. Let's enable the uh, WebSocket code in our HTMX. So as we see here, we connect to the WebSocket protocol on port 8080 slash chatroom. And the ID chatroom defines that we will replace the content here with the content of the WebSocket response with the ID of chatroom. And we also have a form that sends into the WebSocket the content of chat message. So if we refresh, we see um, on network tab, let's. So uh, if we reload, we see the WebSocket connection chat room and we see there one uh, where data incoming that say, welcome to the chat room. So we, we can receive data. Uh, HTMX is a bit interesting here. So this diff will be replaced with the new diff that says uh, has the ID of chatroom. 
So if we now send uh, welcome to the chat room as a div with the ID of chat room and close the div, we should receive, yeah, perfect. So now we receive the message welcome to the chat room in here. Uh, if we take a look at the data, we again see, okay, welcome to the chat room. And if we now send something in here, so we write test, hit enter, we see, okay, we send now the JSON. The correct pronunciation is probably JSON. With the chat message, test, and then a few headers. We don't uh, really care about that. But we can see now we receive the message. So what we can do now is take the message and send it back. So first of all, we parse the message. So we need to parse the message. This is a bit complicated. So we need to first do a two string, then we pass the JSON, and then we uh, get the text message. So we as dot send, uh, send, let's copy this one. And we can just send back the message. So we need to make it to a rich string. And if we now, oh, what broke? Ah, we cannot really declare a message. So incoming parsed message. Okay, let's refresh, test, and we see test received. So we received the message in the chat room and can answer this. So if we now want to have a global chat, let's say uh, this is coming from the database, uh, const messages. So we have an empty messages array and we just messages dot push message. And then we send uh, as response the messages as a list. So let's say we want to say uh, unordered list and in there we send the messages list. And to create this, we map over the message and return the messages. So we can now send the messages back and forth. Okay, we have one thing that we uh, have to add dot join because it will per default join the uh, data as with a comma separated. So we don't want to have them like this. Okay, now we have the messages uh, one after another. But if we now open a second window with the same tab, we will see no messages. We have to first send something to the chat room. And if we go to the other window, so if we open both in parallel, we see, okay, now I don't update it here. I just see the messages after I send a message to get the new state. But this is nothing, uh, not a state we want to have. We want to inform uh, the other window that there's a new message because this is the whole point of the WebSocket, right? So what we can do is basically uh, remember the connection. So we say const uh, connections. And when someone is connecting to our WebSocket, we say connections dot push the WebSocket. And when there is a message, we don't send it to this WebSocket, we send it to all WebSockets. So we can just say connections dot for each connection and we just do the same thing. So now if we send something here, it should appear in the other window as well test from left and it received on the other one. And if we send something here, it's back and forth. So now the WebSocket is connected and it will send to all the connections out there as before. But if we open a new one, we also have to send it. So we don't want to send uh, this on open. We want to send basically all the messages that are uh, there on open. So we have to uh, do basically the same thing as here. We just remember all the messages, 
and do the same as here. We can make this more beautiful, but to be honest, we don't care. Also test and everyone is receiving it. And if we refresh the page, we also receive the new messages, uh, the old messages. Yeah, this is basically it to implement a WebSocket and implement uh, service sent events. So it's very easy to get started with service sent events and WebSockets. I would highly recommend you to dig into it, test it out, try to implement a WebSocket yourself, uh, try to play around a bit with it. There's a bit more to it than I showed now, but it is very important to know the concepts of WebSockets and service sent events. Because if you always just use refreshing, you, you basically hit the server with a lot of requests that are unnecessary. For example, you have a queue of people who want to buy a ticket in a ticket queue. You don't want the user to refresh and refresh and refresh every time to see the updated position in the queue. You want to inform the browser that his queue position now is, I don't know, 800 or something. Because if the user is forced to refresh to get the updated view, you basically create a ton of load on your server because everyone is constantly refreshing to see his updated queue position. And it is way better to just inform the browser. Now your queue position is 200, now it's 100, and now it's your turn. This is how you reduce load from your server, uh, make the website more interactive, and all in all, it just makes a lot of sense to do that. If you learned something new or enjoyed the video, I would appreciate your like or subscribe uh, because 99% of my viewers aren't subscribed yet. Uh, if you're interested in the code, I can link it in GitHub. Until then, happy coding and see you next time.